Yo, what's up guys? You're back with Technic and today we have a comparison video between the Realme X2 Pro Xiaomi CC9 Pro Premium Edition, also known as the Note 10 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. The Note 10 Plus looks absolutely stunning with its white back over here and curved Quad HD display in the front. We also have that wonderful Note S Pen that we get in the Note series, which gives it every right to be called a Note, other than other phones, especially in this comparison. Then we have the Realme X2 Pro, which comes paired with a 90 hertz Full HD plus panel, 64 megapixel camera, and 8 gigs of RAM. It is an absolute monster due to that Snapdragon 855 Plus processing chip and the fact that it is actually cheaper than the Mi CC9 Pro Premium Edition. This does actually say Premium Edition over there. I did have it translated. So this is the 8 gig of RAM, 256 gig version. And the first thing that we have in the box here is indeed the silicone case. And the main reason that I went and waited for the CC9 Pro Premium Edition is because of that wonderful 8P lens of that 180, 108 megapixel camera. We have a USB Type-C cable over there and a 30 watt charging block inside the box, which is always nice to see. Pretty much the highest that I've seen in a Xiaomi phone, usually they keep it to 27 watts. Then we have this wonderful sound over here. Uh, isn't that a just clear breath of fresh air to your ears over there guys and we're going to go ahead and boot on the cc9 pro but just before we do that we're going to take a look at the back now this is a bit of a white finish but it actually has a tinge of blue in it if you ask me i think it looks really sweet it really does give a nice accent color over there and now we're going to go ahead and throw on the boots and bring up the other two powerhouses now looking at the branding over here i think the realme have placed their logo a little bit strangely and xiaomi have kept things a little bit more simple samsung have kept it really subtle at the back there with the white Samsung logo. Now we're going to dive straight into the CC9 Pro Premium Edition's body over here and we have the power button over there. It is not textured and it is not indented unfortunately and taking a look at the Note 10 Plus on its right hand side things look pretty similar though that is on the left and with the Realme X2 Pro the volume rocker is actually split which I do actually prefer. Now we're going to go ahead and check at the top over here. Xiaomi have actually included an IR blaster which is really interesting to see in 2019 and if you take a look at the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. We don't have that though. We do have an option for a micro SD card slot. We don't have that on any other phone. On the left it is nice and clean on the CC9 Pro Premium Edition but and we have the Note 10 Plus with a power button on the left and the split volume rocker on the Realme is on the left as well. So that Xiaomi is only one pairing the volume rocker on the right hand side. We have a downward firing speaker over here. USB Type-C which is limited to 2.0 speeds. We only have UFS 2.0 storage over here but we do have a headphone jack which is really good to see. Now the Note 10, like I said, has every right to be called a Note and the Mi Note 10 Pro does not since it does not have a stylus and the bottom of the X2 Pro looks really similar to that of the CC9 Pro Premium Edition. Now guys, I do mention the Mi Note 10 Pro because it is the exact same phone as the CC9 Pro Premium Edition and we do have a top speaker over here which is for dual speaker sound and we have a 32 megapixel f2.0 selfie snapper on the Mi Note 10 Pro over here which is really good to see much higher than the others and at the back we have a Pentacam setup, Penta meaning 5. We have a 108 megapixel ISO cell over here which was Samsung and Xiaomi's baby. This is the 8P lens version meaning 8 layers of plastic. We have a 20 megapixel ultra wide sensor, 12 megapixel telephoto for 2 times 5 megapixel telephoto for five times optical zoom and a two tail and a two megapixel macro sensor on the other phones we have the x2 pro with a 64 megapixel snapper 8 megapixel ultra wide 13 teller and 12 depth sensor the note 10 has a 12 megapixel main camera 16 ultra wide 12 telephoto lens also at two times and a 3d top lens which is always welcome if you ask me since it does great things with the depth effect now taking a look at the actual camera bumps the me cc9 pro premium edition that is a mouthful to say so i'm going to be referring it to the cc9 or the Note 10 Pro over here. It has a much bigger bump than the Realme X2 Pro and more so than the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And you can see it when you touch down anywhere on the right side of the screen. But with the X2 Pro only at the tops, you notice that bit of a bump where the Samsung doesn't really have much of it at all. We do have that curved 6.47 inch OLED panel on the Mi CC9 Pro Premium Edition and it looks absolutely fantastic. It has a max brightness of 600 nits, but that doesn't compare to over a thousand nits on the Samsung and pretty much a thousand on the X2 Pro as well. Now taking a look at the notches over here, I think that the most subtle notch is probably the Samsung's because it is a hole punch notch style. And then the X2 Pro because it is very kind of like sloped into it. And if we take a look at the curves between the Mi CC9 and the Note 10 Plus, the curves are a lot more prominent on the CC9. It is more so like I would say the Samsung Galaxy 
S6 Edge or the S7 Edge. It is very prominent. I do prefer subtle curves. And at the bottom, we do have a much smaller chin on the Note 10 Plus. And at the top, the same thing can be said over here. Though the chin is not that big on the CC9, I must add. Taking a look compared to the X2 Pro over here, the X2 Pro has a flat panel. So you can see much bigger borders on the left and right. Though the bezels at the bottom and at the top are pretty identical here. I would say that the CC9 has a little bit of an advantage when it comes to bezels over the X2 Pro. Now taking a look at other display options that we do have with these glorious displays over here, we do have an always on display on all three phones over here, though we have the most amount of options on the Xiaomi and the Samsung, and we pretty much have no options whatsoever on the X2 Pro. I think things look really awesome with the Xiaomi, and we have a 90 hertz panel on the X2 Pro over here, something that the other phones lack, though we do have a WQHD Plus panel on the Samsung. We have have nothing of the sort on the CC9. No higher 90 hertz refresh rates and no QHD unfortunately. Though we do have dark mode on all the phones, I think the most black that I can see is the CC9, which is really good to see. Though on the X2 Pro, we can actually customize actual apps, third-party apps, making use of that dark mode, which is really interesting if you ask me. Unfortunately, all the phones, including the Mi 10 Pro, is paired with Android 9 Pi, though we will soon be getting an update to Android 10 very soon on all three devices, especially the Xiaomi because of their hard linking with Google over there. Now we do have some interesting gestures on the CC9. Unfortunately, we can only pull back on the left and the right of the phone, where on the Samsung, we can actually go back using just the bottom corners of the phone, which is what I do prefer. And what's even better is the X2 Pro lets you choose. You can actually choose if you want your back buttons to be on the left or the right of the phone, or swipe up gestures from either corner of the phone like on the Samsung so you get the best of both worlds when it comes to the X2 Pro. Now taking a look at unlocking facial recognition over here, we do have the Mi Note 10 Pro unlocking it slightly faster than the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but Samsung is not really known for speeds when it comes to unlocking using facial recognition. Now the Samsung does have an ultrasonic sensor when it comes to fingerprint scanning and the Xiaomi unfortunately has an optical sensor, so things are a little bit quicker when you hold your finger down, but I must say that if you do use Samsung the intended way by just tapping it down as I'll show you guys now it seems to make it a little bit quicker over here if you ask me guys now sh shooting up between the realme x2 pro and the xiaomi mi note 10 pro unlocking the screen has to go to the x2 pro it is blitz fast guys you can't even see the lock screen at all and I did recognize my face on all three phones at the same time to make sure I'm getting accurate results over here and when it comes to the fingerprint sensor we have optical sensors between the x2 pro and the mi note 10 pro and the x2 pro takes it pretty Pretty much every time over here being the king in both optics when it comes to facial recognition and under display fingerprint sensors between the three devices overall i'm pretty impressed with the software front on all three phones over here and i think that things have been done really well on oppo software color os on the x2 pro but i do think that i favor one ui on the samsung the most now we're going to shoot over to camera over here and we're going to be comparing the cc9 pro premium edition with that 108 megapixel 8p camera against the rest over here so these are the ultra wide shots over here having the highest ultra wide on the Mi Note 10 Pro and then going into the main this is the 108 megapixel 8p and then a bind shot or bind shot I must say because we take four pixels and combine them into one in the Realme X2 Pro and the Note 10 Pro over here for a better quality image, not using that full resolution scale. When you do two times optical, things don't look that bad on all devices since they all have a smashing telephoto lens. But going into macro mode, the Mi Note 10 actually has a dedicated macro lens, so that definitely helps in that department. Once again, we're shooting ultra wide outside my apartment over here. We're gonna go to that 108 megapixel 8P lens on the Xiaomi and compare it to the rest. You can see a lot more detail over here, guys. Then the bin shots, I must say that the Xiaomi and the Samsung are taking the lead over the X2 Pro over here, doing that two times optical on the telephoto camera of the Mi Note 10 and the Samsung definitely look the best. Now we do have five times optical on the Mi Note 10 Pro as well. We have another dedicated telephoto lens and we use that for hybrid upscaling to 10 times zoom as well. We have a 10 times zoom digital on the X2 Pro and the Note 10 Plus and a max zoom of 50 times on the Xiaomi as opposed to 20 times on the X2 Pro and just 10 times on the Samsung. Taking selfie snaps, I do think that the Mi Note 10 Pro definitely has the advantage with that 32 megapixel snapper, but the Samsung does have ultra wide in the front, which is really cool, even though the colors are a little bit washed out. Now, when it comes to video, we do have 4K 60 FPS on the X2 Pro and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, though we are limited to 30 FPS on the Mi Note 10 due to that wonderfully crap 
Snapdragon 730G mid-range processing chip, though we do have 1080p at 60 frames per second, so that's good to see. We do have optical image stabilization on the Xiaomi and the Samsung, but there is none present on the X2 Pro, and I think it shows slightly, though I must say that it does look really stable compared to the other two on the X2 Pro. Now we can film in ultra wide over here, and the Realme and the Samsung both sport 4K 30fps ultra wide recording, and unfortunately the Xiaomi is limited to 1080p 30fps recording. Though we can go into the videos by zooming in quite a bit and use the telephoto lenses, I think that it comes out looking the best on the Xiaomi, even though you cannot jump between them as you can on the X2 Pro and on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, you have to zoom with your finger physically. Now, when it comes to charging, we have a 50 watt block on the Realme, 30 watt on the Xiaomi, and 45 watt on the Samsung, though you have to splurge extra for the Samsung one since it doesn't come in the box. Now, all phones are paired at 60% over here. I made sure that they were exactly the same before running the interval, as you guys can see on the right hand side there. On the five minute mark, we have 18% of juice on the X2 Pro, 9% of juice on the Xiaomi, and 11% on the Samsung over there. We did start at 60%, so take a look at the top of the screen, going from 60% to whatever it is right now. And after 10 minutes, we have a 35% charge on the Realme X2 Pro, 16% on the Xiaomi, and 24% on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Now, after just 12 minutes, we got that full 100% on the Realme X2 Pro, going from 60 to 100% in just 12 minutes. We actually only managed 80%, only jumping up by 20% on the Xiaomi, and only jumping up by 24% on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So I'm pretty impressed with the charging speeds here, though most impressed with the X2 Pro, but remember that the Xiaomi does have a bigger battery than the rest of the phones here, Samsung being second at that. Now when it comes to raw processing power over here, the Realme X2 Pro definitely outshines the rest with the Snapdragon 855 Plus processing chip, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus just has the vanilla Snapdragon 855, while the Xiaomi unfortunately has a 730G mid-range chip. We have enabled high performance mode on the X2 Pro, and also kept that 90Hz refresh rate panel over here to bring guns to a knife fight, and we do have Game Turbo on the Xiaomi, though we don't have any other form of performance boost over here. So we're going to run Antutu version 8.1.4 on all devices, and we have included high performance mode on the Samsung, though it's not really high performance mode, it just does not restrict performance, and we have changed the screen to full HD plus resolution. I have gone ahead and sped this up a crap load so that I don't keep you guys here all day, and just to let you guys know the final results, because that is what is important over here when it comes to benchmark runs, not necessarily watching the clip. Now in first place, we have the Realme X2 Pro with a score of 470,000. We lost 4% in the battery drain department, and it is the coolest battery temp and the hottest CPU temp, unfortunately at 42 degrees. The 33.9 degrees on the battery temp is pretty impressive if you ask me. In second place, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus with the Snapdragon 855 processing chip, 449,000 points, also a drop in minus 4% battery, though it has a bigger battery, so the drop is a little bit higher. And we have the coolest CPU temperature over here, which is pretty impressive. If you ask me, Samsung is not really known for it. Then in third and worst place, the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 Pro with 259,000, which is almost half of the other two because of that Snapdragon 730G chipset, which is only eight nanometer technology. And we do have the hottest battery temp score over here. So that's not that impressive if you ask me, guys. I think if you're going for performance, stick with the two, one on the left, one on the right, and ditch the one in the middle. But if you want camera, definitely go for the Xiaomi Mi CC9 Pro Premium Edition. What a mouthful, guys. It looks absolutely stunning with that five penta lens camera system at the back, that 108 megapixel 8P lens. I definitely think it is worth investing in the premium edition because of the eight layers of plastic instead of the seven seen in the entry edition over here. I think the opticals are pretty awesome. It's really cool to see that there's a headphone jack. The curves on the panel are a little bit prominent, though it is really awesome to see that they have included curves for the first time ever on a Xiaomi phone, but it's unfortunately unfortunate that video is capped at 30 frames on 4K. Unfortunately, we are also stuck to Android 9 Pi. Hopefully that changes really soon. And once again, that processing chip is not the best if you ask me. At the bottom of the phone, I must say that it does not deserve the right to be called a Note. The Samsung does definitely due to that wonderful stylus and we also have UFS 3.1 story on the real on storage on the Realme and the Samsung but that is not present on the Xiaomi what is present is an IR blaster so if that matters to you but the only phone with micro SD card support is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 plus so if that's your thing go for it but remember it costs quite a bit more 
Now, I must say that the Xiaomi has impressed me due to the camera, but I don't think it is the world's best camera as opposed to these other two phones over here. So I'm gonna put that aside. The Samsung is pretty much an all round amazing phone, but due to its price tag, I have to give all points to the Realme X2 Pro. It is definitely one a place in my heart in 2019 and hopefully in your pocket very soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this test as much as I did making it. And until next time, guys, this is Technic.